We're here today with a 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E with the extended range battery pack and all wheel drive. It's also featured in what I think is a beautiful cyber orange. We're doing the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway test with this guy today. I'm topping her off at a DC fast charger. I'm gonna head out onto the highway, drive at a constant 70 miles an hour to see just how far this car goes before we're at 0% state of charge. All right, so we're out on the road, cruising along at a steady 70 miles an hour. I have the new Ford Blue Cruise 1.2 in this Mustang Mach-E. We're not gonna be talking a lot about that here in today's video. This is the range test, but we are gonna follow up with a video that fully explains and shows how Blue Cruise 1.2 works. So far, so good. It does automatic lane change, which is really cool. I've been playing around with that, but uh, we're locked in at 70 miles an hour and cruising along in a 2023 Mustang Mach-E non-GT. This is the all-wheel drive with extended range battery premium version. It has the stock wheels, which are 19-inch wheels with 255, 55R, a Michelin Primacy tires. And before we left, I made sure I set them to the specified 39 pound per square inch. We make sure the tire pressure is at the right pressure, or at least the suggested tire pressure when we do these range tests. If you uh, overinflate your tires a little bit, maybe not the best for a driving experience. It gets a little bit more bumpy, not as good grip, but you can squeeze out a little bit more miles in your EV if you do a couple of uh, pounds higher than what the recommended tire pressure is. We're not recommending you do that here, but it is a kind of a little cheat that uh, some EV owners know and do. So we make sure that all the tire pressure is always the same when we do these range tests, so it's fair. Uh, we also always set the climate control to somewhere between 68 and 70 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. I have it set to 70 degrees here today and on the lowest fan setting, which is fan setting one here in the Mach-E. Uh, we also always put the vehicles in the most efficient driving mode. And in the Mach-E, that's called whisper driving mode. So we're in whisper driving mode, climate control set at 70. Uh, right now it's 62 degrees outside. It was 58 degrees when we started this morning, which is a little cooler than I had hoped. Uh, ideal range temperature for uh, electric vehicles is somewhere in the 70 degrees. Uh, that's where you seem it's really the sweet spot between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit to get the most range when you're driving. I'm also monitoring the wind in the area. It really isn't that bad yet. It's about six miles an hour that's coming in from the southeast. So I kind of have a little bit of a headwind right now, but um, I don't think six miles an hour isn't enough to make any kind of a big difference. We really start getting concerned when we get up over 10 miles an hour of wind because that does have a significant effect once you get up over 10 miles an hour. All right, so we're cruising along. Uh, I will note that I did the 70 mile an hour range test on a 2021 Mustang Mach-E with the same trim as this. At the time, the Mach-E was rated at 270 miles of EPA rated range. That's the combined EPA rated range. Since then, in the past two years, Ford has opened up three more kilowatt hour of the battery. The battery pack is still the same size as it always was. The gross capacity is 98.8 kilowatt hour, but now the usable capacity is 91 kilowatt hour. When Ford first introduced the Mustang Mach-E, there were only allowing customers to access 88 kilowatt hour. So they opened up three more kilowatt hour, so that increased the range a little bit. They also, through software improvement, and they've improved the efficiency of the vehicle. So that's also accounted for some of the range. And now this version of the Mach-E is rated at 290 miles per charge. So that's a combined EPA range rating. It's not the highway EPA range. That'll be lower. It's probably somewhere around 270 miles. But the results of my first range test with the same vehicle as this, the same type of vehicle, uh, we crushed it. We came in with 285 miles driven at 70 miles an hour, and I averaged 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's kind of the goal, what I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to achieve now. I, I don't necessarily know if we're gonna beat that, 
because every range test is different. It's a little bit cooler today. When I did that range test, it was perfect. It was 72 degrees. There was no wind. That extra, you know, 10 or 12 degrees might rob us of, of, of five or six miles here. So uh, kind of what um, uh, the Ford added, but we'll see at the end. Right now we're cruising along. I'm only averaging 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour so far, which is less than what I averaged on that trip. So um, we'll see. The wind could be a little bit different. Uh, temperature is a little bit lower, but uh, we won't know until we finish. And uh, my first check-in will be when we're at 75% state of charge. We'll see how the vehicle is doing at that point. And uh, we'll talk about uh, how I think this range test is going. All right, so we're at 75% state of charge, one quarter of the way through this range test. And we went 71 miles from 100% down to 75%. Our consumption rate is three miles per kilowatt hour. Not quite as good as I saw when I did the first range test with a similar vehicle to this. We averaged 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, but we're tracking well. Uh, with 71 miles of range covered, that would track to uh, 284 miles if we're able to complete that same consumption on each leg of this range test. And I finished up with 285 last time. So we're right on course to, to have the same range. And you would think maybe we should have more range because the EPA range rating is higher. Ford also opened up three more kilowatt hour of battery, but every range test is going to be slightly different. We, we're not, this isn't a scientific test where we can control every variable. We do as best we can, but there's always gonna be a slight variation. It's cooler today. The wind is a little bit different. It's also very foggy. There's a fog alert out on the New Jersey Turnpike where I'm driving today uh, because it's very foggy. There's a mist in the air and every now and then the wipers are cleaning the uh, windshield, which is adding some extra wind resistance. Even those little droplets hitting the car over hours of driving uh, can cut into your consumption a little bit. So all those things are conspiring to give us a, um, a higher consumption rate than what we saw when I did this similar vehicle in the first range test two years ago. But we're only a quarter of the way through. A lot of things can change here. Let's see where we're at Went 50% when I check in next. All right, we're at 50% state of charge. Half of the range test is over and we've driven 143 miles pretty much the same as we did on the first leg. If you remember from 100 down to 75%, we drove a little more than 71 miles. We drove a little more than 71 miles now and we're at 143 miles. The consumption rate actually has improved a little bit. We're now showing 3.1 mile per kilowatt hour, which is a little bit better than the 3.0. Quite honestly, for this whole drive so far, it's been bouncing between 3.0 and 3.1. So I must be kind of right on the edge between the two. Uh, and it's just almost luck which one it's at right when I hit that state of charge point that we report in on. So uh, it could be 3.0 or it could be 3.1 at 25% state of charge the next checking point. I'm sure it's going to be one of those two because this entire drive now, it's either been 3.0 or 3.1. I also want to mention that we, uh, when we do these range tests, we always check the speedometer against GPS. I have two GPS apps and I always make sure that the 70 miles an hour is 70 miles an hour. It's not in many cases. Uh, often we have to set the, uh, the cruise control a little bit higher than what the speedometer is showing, like to 71 or even 72 miles an hour in order to get a true 70 miles an hour. But in the case of the Mach-E, it was dead on. 70 miles an hour, red 70 miles an hour on both of my GPS apps. So um, good on Ford, it's calibrated really perfectly. Uh, and another thing we always do when we do these range tests is we drive in long loops. Uh, you know, we don't just start in one point and finish in another point far away because if there's elevation change, if the wind is bad, uh, you, if you're getting a headwind the whole time or a tailwind, that'll really affect the range test. But, so by driving in these long loops, about 50 mile loops up and down, I drive on the New Jersey Turnpike, uh, it negates elevation change or it tries to negate it at least and, uh, and also the wind. We're gonna try to start, uh, finish off pretty much where we started or within five or 10 miles of where we started. It depends on when this thing's gonna run out. I can 
kind of guess where it's going to run out now because this is pretty rock solid with how how consistent it's been so far so i might be able to finish up at the same charging station we started if not i start i'll stop at another one which is like 10 miles away um and that's once we're, once we're completed so um that's it we're on course to finish up with 200 over 280 miles which is excellent for the mustang maki it's one of the longest range electric vehicles in its class and it delivers on that range it doesn't promise one thing and then deliver another so uh, the maki's done well in our range tests here at inside evs all right we'll check in at 25 percent state of charge the final check-in before the range test is over we'll see how we're doing all right we're at the final checkpoint we're at 25 percent state of charge and so far we have driven 213 miles that means from 50 percent down to 25 percent we went 70 miles a little less than we did in the two previous quarters of the trip but it's still pretty tight 71 miles 72 miles 70 miles the maki is a model of consistency range wise i'm getting nearly perfect range as the the test continues now the only thing is for this last uh quarter the range estimator showing that I won't be able to go 70 miles in the, in the uh, this last quarter, and then I'm going to come short of what I had hoped to match the previous range test we did on the Maki. -E. So um, let's see. I know there's always a little bit left at the bottom, uh, even after it says zero, and we'll try to squeeze that out. Of course, I won't do that on the highway. I'll probably get off the highway when it's right at zero percent state of charge and then drive the last mile or two right around the charging station to see if I could just drain the thing out completely but um, we'll see that's going to be the next check-in point uh, the only other thing I want to add is that I'm really liking Blue Cruise 1.2 so far it has automatic lane changing it's not uh, bouncing back and forth in the lane they call that ping-ponging as much as I used to and uh, overall it's a really good system i'm going to do more comprehensive testing on this all week i have the vehicle for a week and um uh, possibly put out a video and uh talk about uh exactly how well this new feature uh this new blue cruise system works and uh, the new features that they've added all right so we'll be checking in when we are at the electrify america charging station in east brunswick is the one that we're going to go to and uh, i'm not going to try to make it up to bridgewater it's a little bit further and the fact that the range estimator is telling us that we would come up um seven or eight miles short of that that's a little bit too much to push so we're going to end up in east brunswick and um we'll check in there and we'll see how far we've gone all right so i am pulling into the electrify america dc fast charge station this one happens to be at a walmart so i'm in walmart parking lot right here and let me navigate my way through here and there's another id4 big surprise there's millions of them everywhere electrify america dc fast charging stations because they get free charging and we are at 285.1 miles the state of charge is at zero the vehicle is saying that there's one mile of remaining range but uh I'm not going to push it any more than this so 285 miles our ending consumption rate is 3.1 mile per kilowatt hour so we basically mirrored what i did the first time with the uh maki all-wheel drive extended range battery uh, two years ago even though the rated range is higher now by 20 miles 270 miles was the original epa range rating and it's now 290 miles and as i pull into this electrify america station i see the plug on the left that i want to use says unavailable which unfortunately happens a lot let's see if i can back up and move over station and then we'll do the wrap up from here okay all righty hopefully this station works park okay final wrap up 285.1 one mile of estimated range remaining zero percent battery 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour so the mach e just 
just wants to give me 285 miles and that's it, regardless of what the EPA range rating is. Now, I'm sure that if I drove this vehicle under the conditions when I did the first range test two years ago on a similar vehicle, uh, I, this vehicle would have gone further because uh, you know even though we didn't have terrible weather, it was at least 10 degrees cooler here today than when it was when I did the first range test. And uh, it was windy, it bounced between six uh, mile per hour winds and up to eight mile per hour winds. And also, as I said, we had a thick fog the whole day. The wipers kept going because it was just like a mist in the air. And it even started drizzling for about four or five minutes, but very lightly. So all that adds up and um, you know conspired to probably rob me of maybe, uh, maybe six or seven more miles I would have gotten under ideal conditions, but it was pretty good conditions today. We can't complain about that. And you can't complain about 285 miles of range. Anyway, the Mach-E has one of the longest driving ranges of any electric vehicle in its class. It's not the longest, but it's, it's at the top of the class. It definitely does really well. And here at 70 miles an hour, 285 miles. Listen, if you're on a long road trip, that's fine. Now the Maki doesn't charge as well as some of its competitors. And we're actually going to do a full zero to 100% DC fast charge recording now. So look out for that video in uh, a couple of weeks. We'll do our full analyzing. Uh, we've done this before, but since then, Ford has changed the DC fast charging curve a little bit. They've improved it. So I'll be able to use this recording compared to the recording we did two years ago and see if indeed the vehicle charges better. Well, that's it for our Inside EV 70 mile an hour highway range test on the 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E with the extended range battery pack and all wheel drive. Listen, if this is your first time here, don't forget, click that subscribe button and follow Inside EVs on all of your social media channels. And as always, Thanks for watching.